Hi, uh, my name is Vivek. I work in the research team. Uh, so my talk today is going to be about, can you tune my car? This is a question that I get at least once a week on Discord. Uh, so we have a Discord. Uh, I'm sure, how many of you have been on our Discord? Okay, and we have a development tuning channel. How many of you have been on the tuning channel? Okay, great. So if you go to the tuning channel, you see a lot about uh, good tuning, bad tuning, and ugly. Uh, maybe not ugly, just good and bad. So if you're new to OpenPilot or new to Discord or new to the channel, you might be wondering what exactly needs tuning, right? So everything that we spoke about today, we never really uh, spoke anything about like, you know, tuning something. So what exactly needs tuning? And for that, you have to understand how is your car different when it comes to OpenPilot? Like how are cars different with respect to OpenPilot? So, so these are some of the brands that we, uh, that we support. So some ways in which cars are different are, you know, the wheelbase is different. And the wheelbase is the distance between the front and the real wheel. So as you can imagine, different cars have different sizes, so the wheelbase is different. They also have different widths. And as a consequence, they also have different uh, masses. Like some cars are light, some cars are heavy. We, have, we, range, we support from like tiny cars to like the Ram, uh, and they're quite different in that way. Uh, cars are also different when it comes to other things like steering ratio. Uh, steering ratio is how much your car turns with how much steering wheel turn. And that is different in each platform and also different across brands. Uh, your tire stiffness, which is like, again, like the quality of your tire, how much like torque your tire provides while turning, stuff like that is also different. Uh, the center of gravity is different uh, in all cars. Uh, depends on how many people are in the car and stuff like that. Uh, and then actuator lags. So each brand and each platform have different ways of processing the signal that we send to the car. So when we say, okay, you know, do this maneuver or do this turn, uh, there is like a, some internal processing happening in the car, and then it actually actuates that in the final actuator, and there is like a lag, which is also different for uh, different brands. So all of these things are different. So to understand how like these differences in cars manifest, uh, let's look at this example. So. These are three cars, the Honda Fit, the Toyota Corolla, and the Ram. All of them are like, you know, quite different as you can see the uh, images. Uh, so let's focus on uh, lateral movement, right? So let's assume all cars are moving at uh, 20 meter per second. Uh, all, all of them have a 10 degree steering angle, uh, and they're all traveling on a flat road. So this is the trajectory that these cars would take. So this is the, uh, the Y versus X. So if you start at the same position, this is what the cars would do under the same instructions. So it's, I guess right now it's clear that we need to really understand like, you know, what exactly happens when you give instructions to cars. So how do we actually learn these things? We learn these things using something called the vehicle model. So to understand the vehicle model, let's look at some high school physics. Uh, so you're turning, uh, you're in a car and you're about to go to a turn. Uh, so this is the front view. So let's assume that the road is banked uh, and let's also assume there is some wind because why not? Uh, in this, so this is the top view of your car. So your four wheels and your front wheels are turning. Uh, so in, uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with uh, car dynamics. So this is something that we call a slip angle, the angle between uh, your direction of motion to your heading is called the slip angle, and that determines a lot of the dynamics of your car. So you can see that there are forces that act on the tires. So this is basically a, something called a bicycle model, which is you assume that your car is a bicycle, which is not a good assumption, but it really works. It's like a it's a simplified assumption of your car, uh, and then you know this is where the center of gravity is, and then you have like you have if you draw all the free body diagram and the forces uh, that act on this. Uh, on this object, uh, you end up with something like this. So let's quickly go through this. Uh, it looks quite scary, but it's not. So what we have is the desired curvature that you know we get from the model and from the planner. We know we the car has to do something, right? At some curvature, at some speed. So we have the yaw rate. If we make some very generous assumptions about cars and about our dynamics, 
we can find out from the state space equation, we can find what the slip angle is to achieve this particular yaw And when we know the slip angle, we can find the steering angle required to, that you're required to like turn to achieve uh, like the maneuver that you want to do. So this is, a, this is called the vehicle model. So we have a, a daemon in uh, uh, OpenPilot called ParamSD, which learns this, all these parameters inside that we, that we spoke about. Uh, and then it learns like the dynamics of your particular car. So it learns things like the steer ratio, uh, the tire stiffness, the road roll, the steering angle offsets, and all of these things. And it learns all of these things uh, about your car, about your particular car. So you know, the interesting thing is that the steering angle offsets is basically, to go straight, you would assume you should keep your steering angle at zero degree, but that's not true all cars have some offset. You have to keep your steering angle at like two degrees or minus two degrees or whatever. And that depends on your car and how long you've driven it and stuff like that. So this is also something that we learn uh, live while you're driving. Uh, a fun fact is that as a consequence of learning all this, we also know when, you're, when you have a bad wheel alignment, which is if your wheels are aligned badly and then you know, if you wanna go straight, you have to hold your wheel at like a 10 degree angle or something like that. A lot of people you know, come on Discord and they're like, hey, I just installed. Uh, open pilot, I, it drives fine, but it like, you know, it tries to go, when I hold, the, when the wheel is straight, it tries to go right, and when it's going straight, the wheel is to, uh, slightly to the right, is my device broken? And then we tell them what the problem is, and then they come back a few days later saying, hey, about that, I went to a mechanic, and you know, he said my wheel alignments were wrong, and then they fixed it, and now my car drives perfectly. So this is something that, from your logs, and from the tolerances that we know, uh, we can tell you if, you know, your uh, car has a bad uh, wheel alignment. Okay, so now we learned all of this stuff. So where do we actually use it? So, you know, as you can know, as you see, uh, we have sensors, uh, which is car agnostic. We have models and planning, which is also pretty much car agnostic. Uh, but the actuators are specific to cars. So this is where, uh, you know, we convert the car agnostic stuff to the car specific stuff. Uh, so, so we started with, uh, a maneuver that we wanted to do, which is like a steering angle. Uh, so to achieve the same thing, so we used a traditional uh, PID control. Uh, so we have a steering angle and the car gives us back the steering angle. So we're like, okay, go 10 degrees and we have a classic PID control uh, to make sure that the car is driving 10 degrees and then everything is good. Uh, so this is the distribution of the uh, lateral acceleration error when, uh, when you're doing these maneuvers. So it's very important for us to understand how well uh, the car is performing the maneuvers that you're asking it to do. And for that, we have a whole bunch of metrics, but one of the most important is absolute lateral acceleration error. So what do we mean by this? We mean that, so when the instruction is to perform some uh, maneuver with some lateral acceleration, and the car is doing something else, so what's the difference between these two? And we have to drive this number down. So as you can see, the straight is, the distribution is like the, the average is much lower than in turns, which means that while going straight, you're pretty much, you know, it's like error free, but in turns, it's like, it's, it's slightly worse. So this is a metric, just remember this metric, we'll keep coming back to this again and again. Uh, so we had all of this, right? But then we realized that in our fleet, uh, the way we actually uh, give instructions to cars, we don't actually give the steering angle. For like overwhelmingly most of our cars, we give the torque we give the steering torque that you have to apply to the car. So we realized, wait a minute, we were going about this whole roundabout way of, we have the curvature, we do all of these equations, and we find the steering angle, and then we close the loop on the steering angle, and then finally send torque. So, you know, we can just like circumvent that and then try to find torque. So this was a whole effort uh, called torque control, which we released in uh, 0815. So let's revisit the same uh, maneuver that we did earlier, which is this car doing this turn at this angle. Uh, now if you focus on the tire patch that is on, in contact with the road, uh, so this is like the free body diagram of this tire patch. So you can see that these are the forces that develop on your tire during a turn. So you can see the wheel is heading is this, the wheel is moving here. So this is the slip angle. Uh, so what this effectively says is that the wheel torque is, uh, you have a resultant force that is like X behind the center of the wheel. So basically, the wheel torque is this resultant force F uh, times uh, this pneumatic trail. And for a particular configuration of your car and your uh, vehicle, this is constant. 
So the key insight here was that the wheel torque is proportional to the lateral acceleration that you want to achieve, uh, adjusting for gravity. And from data, the second insight was that the wheel torque is directly proportional to the steering torque that you apply when you account for some friction. And friction is, you know, when, you, when you're turning right and immediately, if you want to turn left, there is like a bit of friction in your steering column that you have to account for. So basically, uh, you know, we can get the wheel, uh, we can, if, so we have a lateral acceleration that we want to achieve, and we, all we need to do is learn one proportionality factor to directly, you know, to know what command to send to the car. This was great news. So we can find one value, which for each platform, and everything is good, we implemented this. Uh, so you can see this is the lateral acceleration that is desired, and this is the steering command that we send to the car to achieve this. And this is for a Toyota RAV4, and this looks pretty linear to me. Uh, so this is what we implemented uh, in 0815 and torque control, and then this is the result. So again, the same metric, absolute lateral acceleration error uh, for some cars started a Prius, and you can see that the uh, torque control was much better than uh, the simple PID tune for uh, this PID on di directly the steering angle. So this was great news. And this is even great because the subtlety is that these higher errors lead to other things that are undesirable, like they lead to more ping-ponging, they lead to like wandering in the lane, they lead to other things like that, which we don't want. So this was great news, and you know, everything looks, looks good here. But then, okay, let's revisit the assumptions that we made. The assumption was the pneumatic trail was like constant for a given vertical load, which means for a given configuration of your car. But then, you know, like even among platforms, even among like Toyota Priuses, like each Toyota Prius is pretty slightly different depending on like how, how long you've used it, what you put in your car and stuff like that. Uh, the contact tire, uh, tire patch is also quite different. It depends on your qual quality of your wheels. It depends on how much air you have in your wheels. It depends on which road conditions you're driving on. Uh, and the steering column friction depends on, you know, the wear and tear of your car and, and like, et cetera. So this is also uh, corroborated by the fact that when we do the same calculation to find the, the single factor for each platform on every car of that platform, we see that there is like a big difference in uh, the big distribution in the value that is learned. So these are each particular, this is the distribution of the factor that I spoke about. Uh, and you can see that for a, even one platform, there is a wide range of values. So we set the value somewhere here in between, and then it's great for people whose cars are like here. But then if people's cars are like here or here, I mean, it's not that great. Um, so this, is, this was like the motivation for us to go down this route of, you know, we don't, we're not happy with platform averages. We want something tuned for your specific car, the car that you drive. So this inspired uh, this effort called uh, Talk D, which is auto-tune. Uh, so basically what it does is the same thing that we were doing offline on like all the data from a, like, a particular platform like the RAV4, now we do the same computation on your device while you're driving. So when you start driving, we collect data, and then once it meets uh, certain you know, conditions, we fit the, we use the algorithm what that we were doing offline in your car, and then now we have one constant that is learned on your car. And the great thing about it is that if you change your tires next week, or if you refill air, or whatever, if like you have, uh, you put some stuff on top of your car to go somewhere, like it learns live, and it adapts live, and then you know, your, your performance becomes better uh, as a result of that, which is great. So going back to the same metric, uh, so this is for Toyota Highlanders. Uh, you can see that the torque control was red, which was already an improvement over the previous generation stuff. Uh, but torque D was an even better improvement over that, which is great. Uh, this, make, this means that if your platform uh, has like a bunch of versions where, you know, like the versions are different, but they all they somehow called it the same platform, it's still fine because we don't care about that and we learn it for your particular car. So let's revisit the assumptions again. We assume that the, uh, the wheel torque is linearly proportional to the steering torque. So we assume that you, know, you apply some steering torque and the wheel torque is some factor of that and then we forgot about it. But turns out that's also not true. Uh, we assume that the, uh, there are effects like backlash. So when you're turning left, and when you're turning, and immediately you have to turn right, there is, like a, there is some play in the steering column. There's like a backlash that you have to overcome, and then it's, your car starts turning right. 
while driving, we don't really realize this because like, you know, humans are really good at driving. But when you're uh, controlling the car through instructions, you realize you know, there are all these effects at play that you have to account for. Uh, the other assumption was that we didn't care much about speed. We assumed that everything works the same at all speeds. Uh, you know, just like that's fine. Uh, but turns out this is also not true. For some platforms, at different speeds, your car behaves very differently. And this also needs to be accounted for. So for example, if you take uh, the same plot of the lateral acceleration that we desire versus the steering command that you input, uh, this is for the Chevrolet Bolt. Uh, I mean, this looks pretty nonlinear to me. Uh, the, if you remember in the RAV4, it was pretty linear, and in this, it's not. Um, so you know, we had to do something about this, because the same, if you apply the same algorithm that we used earlier, uh, people have like, not nice experiences, uh, especially at the extremes where it's like, it gets pretty nonlinear. So we implemented a nonlinear uh, algorithm where we have a nonlinear fit for the relationship between this lateral acceleration that you want to drive on and the command that you give. Uh, and then this was out in uh, 093. Uh, and you can see the effect of uh, this change. So the nonlinear is, uh, is better than the uh, linear, uh, which is also great. Uh, and a fun fact is you can see that there is like a bit there is a difference in the uh, left turn and the right turn. Uh, this is like an idiosyncrasy of, of GMs. And all these are super interesting things because we can see this at scale. And it's very hard to see this if you have one car. But you can see that the errors are slightly higher for left turns than right turns. Uh, it's because you're the, in, in Chevrolet, uh, the left turn is slightly different in, compared to right turns. And I mean, I don't know why, but it just is. Uh, and this also we need to account for. Uh, so. Uh, this is some. This was like a great improvement for the people using uh, people who have uh, Chevrolet Bolt. So where do we go from this, right? Uh, we've seen that you know over time we keep improving this stuff. Uh, we keep like making sure that we move from platform. We move from fleet averages to platform averages, and from platform stuff to each individual cars. So a big effort for that was we uh, released this data set called Comma Steering Control, and this data set is the largest data set of its kind. So what it has is it has uh, the actual command that you give to the car, which is the steer command, uh, and all the other metadata, like the lateral acceleration, the road roll, uh, the velocity, uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, now, this is excellent because this, is, this data is something that probably nobody else has. Like, we are in a unique position to have so much data about so many different platforms across different driving conditions, different... Uh, like weather conditions and all of that stuff and different like usages, like the cars have different wear and tear. So this is like a fantastic data set, uh, uh, which with all this data, so what you can, and this is like uh, 12,500 hours of open driving, open pilot driving, uh, 10 plus car models and uh, 10 plus brands. Uh, and we have uh, plans to add uh, more data to this. We have plans to add uh, non-open pilot driving. So when, we, when I spoke earlier about the uh, vehicle model, that vehicle model is valid for like small slip angles, which I mean by like, you know, like small steering on a highway. But if you want to do a rapid 180 degree turn, the vehicle model completely breaks down. Like you can't use the same vehicle model for that. Uh, in open pilot, we are not there yet to do 180 degree turns, but we will be. And at that time, we will have to uh, dive deeper into, into the data and figure out you know, how we can uh, improve our algorithms to, uh, to cater to those maneuvers. Uh, so this data set has all of this information. Uh, so some people on Discord have already started using this. So they have some obscure brand that not many open pilot users use. Uh, so now they have like ho access to a whole lot of data that they can like dive into and they can see if they can improve the performance of their own particular car, uh, which is great. Uh, so what, what is the uh, future for uh, tuning and controls, right? So we want to use more uh, neural techniques to uh, learn the complicated feed-forward uh, functions. So you saw we started with like a simple linear model, uh, and then we went to linear model on device, uh, and then we went to a non-linear, but it's still like, it's still, we, we sort of uh, reverse engineer the function and then we learn it. But we want to move to like a totally learned uh, function. So what this means is there'll be like, irrespective of what the input and output is uh, in your car, uh, we should be able to learn the response of your car to the instructions that we have, that we give to the car, 
uh, at all ranges of speeds. There are some cars that do automatic roll compensation in the car and all of this stuff. We want to be able to learn all of this stuff uh, live uh, in, in your particular car. Uh, the final goal is to move to like a target audience of one. So basically the target audience of like you and like everything is tuned to your car and it drives perfectly. Like the output of the model and the planner is perfectly implemented on your car and uh, you know, there is, and, and then the final goal is me not getting any more messages on Discord saying, can you tune my car? Uh, uh, that's, that's it. Uh, I just had a couple of call outs. So uh, do check out this data set. Do come on the uh, uh, Discord channel and we keep discussing uh, a lot on the Discord channel. Um, so, you know, hopefully uh, you can improve your own car uh, much better and then we can upstream it. That would be great. Uh, and a call out to uh, uh, OpenPilot user uh, Twilsinko. Uh, he's been uh, like at the bleeding edge of a lot of this stuff. Uh, I just wanted to call him out and say that's like great work. And uh, we keep watching it and uh, we're very inspired. And I hope this also inspires uh, more people to uh, check out what's happening inside their car. Uh, that, that is great. Awesome. Thanks. If you guys have any questions. All right, we got lots of questions in the front. So are all platforms using the Torque D already for the automatic tuning or that still needs to be flushed out? So um, all Toyotas, all Hyundais. So I think it's about 80% of our fleet uses it. The Hondas don't uh, because there is like a... There is a little bit of problem with the Hondas. I mean, they also work really well on, on traditional PID control. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, most, most cars use it, and the plan is to roll it out to all cars. Great. Hello. So is longitudinal going to be um, in the foreseeable future for auto-tuning? Yeah, so that's a good question. So the thing is, the lateral tuning uh, was very much a function of like it's it's very much defined by the vehicle model and and the physics behind it and a lot of the uh, issues that we used to have was not handling the physics properly but the thing with la longitudinal tuning is that it's it's not much as physics as much as there is a lot of lag and we don't handle the lag compensation properly in longitudinal and it's like a bit tricky uh, to go over that so the problems that are with lateral tuning is very different from the problems with longitudinal tuning so i mean Yes, to answer your question, yes, we will have uh, we will have all the parameters learned live in the car, but it won't be part of Torque D. Like that's that's like separate. I mean, it's like doing something else. Uh, there will be something else like that, which will learn all the parameters required for longitudinal. Gotcha. Thank you. It's like a bit tricky. Great. The problems that are with lateral tuning is very different. I think my question is kind of similar to the last question, but. Um, how do you deal with like uh, hysteresis, which is like uh, basically actuator lag? Like, uh, like for longitudinal, you said there's not much been done yet, but for la latitude, like, uh, is it compensated for in the motion planning, or like? Yeah. So, uh, so what we call friction is like uh, is a manifestation of this hysteresis effect, uh, which we already handle in Open Pilot, in Torque T. Uh, we already compute what this uh, the the hysteresis component looks like, and we already handle this. So if you if you see the uh, plots, uh, I don't know if Greg can uh, pull something up. So we have. So what we call friction is like. Oh yeah, if you see these plots, so this is from our uh, from the uh, uh, data set. Yeah. So if you see this, so this is from the data set that we released. Uh, so the effect there is all hysteresis. Uh, I mean, you see the the width in the in the plot, right? Uh, and this is already accounted for in uh, in torque D, uh, and you know, I mean, we have more effects like that, which are not exactly hysteresis, but they have this like sort of discrete jump type of effects, uh, which is you know more stuff for us to handle. But uh, but yeah, I mean, hysteresis is is handled in torque D right now. Uh, what is the uh, optimal model of tire for open pilot 0 0.9 according to the data <laughs> I mean, yeah that's that's a good question so i guess to answer that there is an optimal model of a tire and there is a 
simple and useful model of the tire, which is what we follow. Uh, if you ask for the perfect model of the tire, I mean, you can find many textbooks on this one topic on like what is oh, the. Oh, sorry, I meant like the make and model. Like, oh, oh, I see. Like, I see. Should we be using Michelin or? Oh, I see. I, I get you. I, I got you. Uh, I'm not sure. The thing is, we don't uh, from logs can get the model of a tire, so uh, I guess that's something that we don't have access to. Uh, but we certainly understand what sort of. Uh, like which platforms have like uh, what sort of effects in following our instructions. And that's something that we can comment on, but uh, yeah, we don't have access to the make and model of the tire. All right, I got a question up front. Is it on the roadmap to replace the current controls and, and tuning system with a completely end-to-end -end machine learning system? Yeah, there is. Uh, but I guess it's not to replace, but to build on, uh, which is, uh, as George said, as everybody's been saying, I think iterative improvement is something that is like a core tenet at Comma. So uh, we had something very simplistic, and then we moved to something a little more complex and a little more complicated. And then, you know, that's, I guess, the direction it will be going in. Uh, we will have much, much smarter techniques that learn everything that needs to be learned, like, while you're driving, uh, and then, uh, yeah, so it's not, it won't be like a replacement as much as just building on what we already have. All right, thank you. Give it up for Vivek.